In the garage today, we have a 1992 Ford Explorer with a 4.0 liter engine and a little over 147,000 miles on it. The starter has been recently replaced on this vehicle. As a problem preventative measure, it is always a good idea to also change the starter solenoid when the starter is replaced. This video will illustrate how to test a solenoid, the wiring attached to the solenoid, and the proper steps to replacing a fender-mounted solenoid. But before we do that, let's first take a look at how a typical solenoid functions. This is a common solenoid wiring diagram. Notice the S terminal. When the ignition key is turned to the start position, this is the terminal that receives the 12 volt signal from the ignition switch. Current then passes from the S terminal through the winding and reaches ground through the mounting bracket. This is a close up view of an actual winding. Whenever current passes through a wire, like this winding, a magnetic field is created around that wire. This magnetic field then pushes the plunger, which also pushes the contact washer, which then makes contact with both battery and starter connections simultaneously within the solenoid. This is the function of a starter solenoid. It makes a high amperage connection from the battery to the starter and is controlled by a low amperage signal through the S terminal. Notice the I terminal is connected to the large terminal leading to the starter. On some applications, this terminal will send voltage to the coil positive connection while the starter is engaged. Now that we know how a solenoid works, let's look at testing and replacing it. The first step when testing a solenoid is to verify battery integrity. The battery should have no less than 12.2 volts in it. If the voltage is below this level, charge and recheck it. While cranking the engine, the battery voltage should not drop below 9.6 volts. When attempting to start the engine, if you hear a sound like this coming from the solenoid, it means either the battery is low on charge or there's a poor connection or cable in the start system. When the solenoid clicks either once or in a series like this, it is doing its job and it is not the component causing the no crank problem. Test the reliability of the battery cables by performing a voltage drop test. Do this by connecting a voltmeter to each end of the cable like this and energizing the circuit. In this case, trying to start the engine will energize the circuit. The voltage on the meter during this test should not be more than two tenths of a volt. If the meter reads a higher voltage, the cable needs to be replaced. When the solenoid does not click, test the voltage at the S wire when the ignition key is turned to the start position. You should read close to battery voltage. If you do not, it means there is a problem with the ignition switch, neutral safety switch, clutch switch, wiring, it's not in park, or the clutch is not depressed. Before replacing the solenoid or any component you are not familiar with, take a picture of it for easy replacement. A cell phone works great for this. Disconnect the battery and then disconnect all the electrical terminals to the solenoid. Notice one of the leads from the battery side of the solenoid goes to the fuse box and the other goes to the fusible link. The fuse box will power nearly everything on the vehicle and the fusible link will commonly power the headlights. If these terminals were connected to the starter side of the solenoid, they would power up only when the starter is cranking. Attach the solenoid to the fender Remember, this is the ground point. It must be grounded to function. Connect all of the terminals from the battery to the closest copper stud and only the starter cable to the other. 
connecting the starter cable to the same terminal as the battery will bypass the solenoid and the starter will continually turn. Do not over tighten the terminal nuts. Connect the S terminal and crank the engine to verify your repair. Solenoids are also used in many applications other than an engine starter. These applications can range from snow plows to golf carts to log splitters to truck lifts and so on. Using a starter solenoid in these applications is a mistake and could cause the motor to fail and even cause personal injury. These applications need an intermittent or continuous duty solenoid. The specifications for these solenoids can be found on our website. That's it for today. See you again next time in the Wells Garage.